Welcome to the tutorial for the Rotting Dean blouse. This pattern's available on my website to buy or download in PDF form. We're going to start by preparing the facing. So I've got a little square of the fabric I'm using here and I've put some interfacing on the back, just a light one as it's a light fabric. That's my facing. Note the grain line and I'm matching it up there. That's my selvage at the top so I know that's the straight grain. Pin it in place and then just cut round it. This is called block cutting. It's just a much more accurate way to cut your pattern pieces and because this is going to go on the centre front of your blouse you want it to be as accurate as possible. There we go. Prep done. So now that little bit of prep's done. I'm going to stay stitch the neckline but first we're just going to have a little look over our front panel and make sure we've marked everything on that we need to. So it's cut on the fold so it's one piece for the front and as you can see there's different dart placements depending on your size. I've marked the dart points with pins and little snips for the wider edge but this neckline here look there's one here for your facing and one there for your tie which you need to mark in some way and your armhole. So now I'm going to just stitch on a size 4 stitch on my machine around this neckline and you'll see I'm not pushing or pulling this through, just letting the machine take it as it wants to so that I don't stretch it in any way so that hopefully those notches will still be in the right places. So now we've stitched it, we're just going to make sure that it's still correct. So I'm just going to show you, look, that's my stitch line. It's just within the centimetre seam allowance. And I'm going to lay it back on my pattern piece to make sure that those notches are still in the same place and that it's still the same length. It hasn't stretched at all or shrunk because sometimes sewing machines, if the tension's not right, it can make it smaller. There you go, you can see perfect. OK, so now we're going to attach this facing. Here's my front again and you'll see I have pressed this facing, pressed the seam allowances back around the outside, try and get it nice crisp edges, but I haven't done the inside V, that I'm going to stitch to my blouse front in a minute. I'll just trim this little bit of extra off so that it doesn't get in the way when we stitch it down. Okay, so let's pin it to the centre front of the blouse. Match it up, it should sit nicely within those notches. And I'm just going to pin into the folds there where the seam allowance is because I'm not going to stitch the seam allowance down. Okay, let's check it on the other side as well because it's quite slippy fabric. Make sure it's all lined up nicely. Okay, that's better. I'm just going to start stitching a centimetre in from the edge where that press line was. Back tack, stitch down to my V, pivot, stitch back up to the other crease line that I've pressed in. So I'm starting here just at that crease, that first press line. Stitching down a centimetre, you can always mark this and draw it on with a pencil or a pen or something to get it nice and accurate. Leave my needle down, pivot and then I'm going to sew up the other side and stop again at that press mark, that press line. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, it's started in the right place so I can still fold that seam allowance back. Nice centimetre seam allowance, nice crisp sharp V. There we go, snip into the V. I'm not going to bother snipping into anything else at this stage. You can trim your facing down if you like but the interfacing is so light it shouldn't really need it. Okay, so that looks really nice doesn't it? Let's turn it over and fold these bits in again. 
this is how it's going to look when it's stitched. So I'm just going to fold all the bits in again and give it another press before I pin it and stitch it. Okay, so it's behaving a little bit more. Now it's been pressed. Let's pop a couple of pins in. And I'm going to just stitch this outside edge. Here we go. I'm using a polyester satin, which is from dead stock. I wouldn't normally buy um, a polyester fabric unless it was a dead stock fabric. Save it going into landfill. I prefer natural fibres. But this is very pretty and, and very light. Just lovely for this kind of project. If you're not... Um, feeling too confident about using a sort of slippy fabric you could use a very light cotton and you'd get a lovely result still but without the slippiness there we go and back tack so you know do trim down any of that um, seam allowance that you feel you want to you've got a nice crisp V there which should be a little bit structured but not too much because you've just used a really light interfacing there Give it another press, job done. So now we've sorted out that centre front, we're going to do the darts. So I've got these little snips in the fabric and this pin to indicate where my darts are. So that's the point where the pin is and the wide end is here. I've got my two little snips at the side there, I'll match those up. You can draw it on with a pencil or a one of those uh, washable pens if you prefer. I'm going to fold it nicely and just put a few pins in as it's a little bit slippy. Starting from the wide end, sewing down to the point. Here we go. It's always a good idea to pop a new needle in when you're using a satin fabric or a silky fabric as they will pull um, and you may actually need to replace it whilst you're sewing your garment as well because they do kind of blunt quite quickly sometimes. There we go, that's my dart. And I'm going to pull this excess fabric downwards so that it's pointing towards the waist and give it a press. There we are, one press dart. So next job is the shoulder seams. Here I've got my back panel and again I'm just going to check I've got my notches marked on it. Here we go. There's two for my back armhole and one and one on the side to match the front. One matches the dart and one is an independent notch. Here's my front panel again. So right sides together. There we go, pop those shoulder seams together, couple of pins in, also need sharp pins for this as well, so again any blunt pins throw them away because they will damage the fabric. There we go, so centimetre seam allowance, I've got a little notch on the shoulder there that I've matched. And I've just stitched those across a centimetre and I'm going to overlock. You could use your zigzag if you don't have an overlocker. Just to neaten those edges. And then I'm just going to press that seam allowance towards the back. There we are, a quick press. Starting to look like a blouse now. Shoulder seams done. So now we're going to move on to the necktie. So here's my pattern piece and here's my pieces. You've got two of these. I did um, sample it on the straight and on the bias cut and I decided the bias was much nicer. So I've cut mine on the bias. You could cut it on the straight if you wanted to. Um, but I think it hangs much more nicely. There we go. There's notches are on there. You had one for your shoulders and one 
for where um, it matches the facing on the front. We're going to stitch this centre back seam, centimetre seam allowance as always, and just press that open. When you're sewing anything on the bias, again, just let the machine take it from you. Don't pull it in any direction and it should come out beautifully. Now we've done that, we are going to right sides together for the points. You can see that notch there. We're going to match those up and pop some pins in. Match your edges up nicely. And again, let it lie where it needs to lie. We're going to stitch from this notch, back tack, and then go all the way down towards the point, pivoting at the corner. So starting with a back tack, just gently manipulate the fabric so that it's lying exactly on top of itself. Those edges are nicely together. It shouldn't fray because it's on the bias. And just take your time to sew your centimetre all the way down, around your corner and towards your end. Right, so there you go. That is sewn. That's what it should look like. So let's just trim a couple of bits off here, just where the points are uh, and the corners. And then I'm going to snip into that seam allowance there, just to that stitching. Don't go too far, so better not to go far enough than too far. And then I'm going to turn it through. I'm not going to do any more trimming because it's such a light fabric that um, I think the little bit of seam allowance that's there actually gives it a nice bit of weight. I'm using a pin to gently tease out the point here. You could use a knitting needle on the inside, which is probably your safer option, but you know, I like to live dangerously. So there we go. We've turned it through. And what you need to do now is sort of roll it between your fingers to get that sewn edge right on the edge there and give it a press. There we go, that's nice. Nice point to the end there. So next is attaching the tie. So here are all my bits and bobs. There's the tie under there, that's it, right. So I've got my front and back blouse here that's still open at the side seams and this is my centre back neck. I've popped a little snip in there as you can see. I just folded it in half to find the centre of the back neck and I'm going to get this seam here, the centre of it, I'm going to pin to that little notch that I've put in there. Okay, and then I'm going to work, find the next notch which should match your shoulder seam. There it is, and I'm going to pin that one, making sure that seam allowance is pointing towards the back of your blouse. And then I'm going to find the other notch which is now where the tie starts. And find that little piece just where the facing ends. Just going to snip into that a tiny bit too so I can join those together. So you want to match those as well as you can because you want that join to be as seamless as possible. Pardon the pun. So pop a pin in there and then you're just going to let the fabric rest and it will naturally just melt into your neckline. As it's on the bias, it will just ease in beautifully. So just take a minute to pin carefully. And if you're not experienced with this kind of fabric or sewing on the bias, you might want to put a little hand stitch in. Now I'm going to stitch from the back neck towards the front neck on each side. So I'm starting at the back neck each time. And again, just letting that fabric melt into the neckline. Just taking a moment to match them up. 
So they're perfect. As I said before, a, a putting a hand stitching tap line in is a really good idea if you're not too confident at this point. And I'm just taking my time, removing my pins as I go. I always try not to use pins or I try not to stitch over them, but you know, sometimes you just feel you have to. Here we go. We're getting down towards the front now. And then when I get to that part where I'm starting to get towards the facing, I'm going to back tack. Okay, so I've gone round from the back neck towards the front on both sides, back tucking at the facing. So you can see I've stitched it on, but I've still got this inside bit to do. That's my ties. And that bit, I just need this to be pressed up now, this um, seam allowance. So the next bit, now you can see I've pressed that up nicely. I'm going to fold the seam allowance down and give it a press. Okay. So we're all prepped and ready to go. Again, you might want to tack this part and that's absolutely fine. Depends what fabric you're using and how confident you are. But basically, that seam allowance needs to be enclosed in that seam. So I'm going to take my time and pin very carefully. And I'm putting that pressed edge against my stitch line. Pushing that seam allowance inside so it's all hidden. And then I'm going to stitch it down. You can hand stitch this bit. Um, and if I was doing it in some posh silk and things, I probably would, but I'm going to just do a machine stitch today. But it's definitely worth taking your time and doing a nice hand stitch. Okay, so I'm going to start there. Take that bit off, it's just got caught up. Start here and I'm going to stitch in that direction around. So here we go, and again I'm taking it super slowly, I've got lots of pins in to try and get as nice an edge as I can. Make sure the underneath is pulled out too, so you're not getting any fabric caught up behind. If you've pressed it nicely it should be okay. So slowly, slowly. Even a hand tack before you do this can make it simpler. There you go, you see. Just lifting my foot up anywhere that it might be starting to go off track. And just popping pins in and taking them out and manipulating it gently as I go. It, trying not to stitch over the pins if I can get them out in time. So there we go. All stitched down. Quite neatly there. Just need to trim off some extra threads. Always have some stragglers there. And that's how our little tie works. So it should look pretty neat now. It's looking good. Okay, so after that uh, slow process of putting the neck on, we're going to just do the side seams, which is a nice easy bit, isn't it? So right sides together. You've got some notches. You've got a notch to match to your dart. And then there's an independent notch to match two. So match your underarms, match that notch to the dart. There's the other one. Okay. So centimetre seam allowance as usual, 
from underarm down towards the hem. There we go, and I've finished it with an overlocker. But you could zigzag. I'm going to give it a press, press it to the back. There we are. Nice easy job. So let's have a look at these sleeves. So here's my sleeve pattern, showing the straight of grain and these are my notches that need to be marked before I take it off, which I have. I've put little snips in again. You can mark with chalk or a pen or pins, safety pins. So we just need one sleeve for the moment and this hem is what we're going to do. Now these are some examples. This was overlocked and turned. These are ones I've previously used to show on a demonstration. And this one, I've just turned it, trimmed it down and then turned it again. So you sew it down once and then sew it down twice. So you get like a little pin hem there, which is a bit nicer finish. And this one is a, a rolled hem foot. So it does it all in one go for you, which it's a bit tricky around curves I find to use, but it does give a really lovely finish. I'm gonna do a little hybrid of overlocking it first like that but then turning and turning so there we go I've overlocked I've used a narrow overlock and then I'm going to turn it and turn it again I just find it gives you something to turn the fabric against if you've got that stitching in there and it gives it a little bit of um, body so that when you've done your cuff your elastic it sort of sticks out a little bit more so it looks quite pretty Anyway, just fold and fold and stitch. Choose whichever method you want to do for your hem. Give it a press. Fabulous. Ready for the next stage. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to shear these cuffs. I love shearing, but I know not everybody does. So I have got an alternative. Just hang on. First, we're going to do the shearing. Hand wind the shearing elastic onto the bobbin. Don't pull it, just wind it loosely. Pop it into your machine. Pull it through all your tensioners as you normally would a normal thread. And you're in business. I usually use a slightly longer top stitch. Um, I'll be using about a four today. Now, I'm going to stitch three rows along here. I'm using right side up because I want the elastic on the inside not on the outside and I've lined the edge of my cuff up um, to a sort of two centimeter seam allowance there so my first row is about two centimeters from the edge pull out and cut the um, elastic near to your fabric so that you've still got a big tail don't use any automatic um, thread cutter if you've got one on your machine because it probably won't like it and then I've just lined up that row of stitching that I've just done with the edge of my foot and so I'm doing another row so they're approximately a centimeter apart because that's the um, amount of space between my needle and the edge of my foot I'm just doing three rows just pulling it out as I stitch and that's what you're left with I love it it's so quick it's easy I find it much more comfortable than regular elastics but, you know, I appreciate that not everybody feels that way. I've given it a little steam, which makes it shrink up a little bit. And I'm just checking it on my wrist that it's not going to be too baggy because I would pull up my elastics if it was. But it's not. It's perfect for my little wrist. So I'm just going to match these edges and stitch all the way down using my centimetre seam allowance again. I'm st actually starting at my elastic end. And you'll probably want to do a slightly smaller stitch um, as you pull um, these elastics towards the raw edge because you want to kind of back tack over them quite a lot to secure them. I will tie them off as well, but um, do secure them in place as much as possible. So there we go. That's my seam allowance. Just pull these threads out. Oh, bit of a scumble bunch going on there. I'll sort that out later. But you just want to make sure you tie up these elastics as close to um, the seam as possible because you're going to neaten the seam edge 
there we go I've done it but I've kept that knot you can see it's in within the stitching so it's secured and kept safe rather than stitch um, I haven't cut it off with the blade give that seam a bit of a press and that's your sleeve I'll show you what it looks like on because I think it's very pretty and like I say just so comfortable So here's your alternative if you don't like the shearing. I've cut a bit of bias binding that I've made myself just from um, where I cut my tie out because it was already on the bias. So I've just cut that from the scrap and I'm just measuring three centimetres from the cuff hem to the edge of my bias. You could do this right on the edge um, and use it as your hem if you don't like a frilly cuff. That's, you know, an alternative. And I'm just going to pin this bias binding all the way down. Look, you can see there I just folded the edges in. It doesn't have to be super accurate. Um, just try and keep it as even as possible. There we go. So I'm just going to stitch this on now on each edge. Like I said, you can move this casing up or down depending how much of a cuff you want. If you like a nice big dandy cuff, you can make the depth a bit bigger. And if you don't, if you want it a bit less uh, flamboyant, just move it down so you don't end up with much of a, thr a frill at all. There we go. Second row of stitching. So that's on now, nice and quick. Just give it a quick press. That's how it looks on the other side. So now we're just going to pop some elastic through it. I've got a safety pin, bit of elastic. And I'm just going to roughly put it around my wrist, allow a bit extra because I don't like it really tight. And also it just allows a little bit extra for the fabric when it's all gathered up. It's a bit more bulky. OK, safety pin in, start threading through. Oh, I'll just trim that little end off. There we go. So just feed it through. Make sure you don't lose the end. You'll want to secure that with a pin in a minute. Just so it doesn't disappear down your casing. So thread it through. And then secure it at both ends. So I'm just pulling it down a bit to try and flatten out the ends so that I can get them under the machine without it being too gathered. That's it. Make sure those are secured firmly with your pin. And again, I'm going to start stitching from the cuff up towards the armhole, doing a back tack over the elastic. So here we go, match your hems nicely. Nice little back tucking over this elastic to hold it securely. And finish the rest of the seam. Centimetre seam allowance as usual. And there we go. Nice back tack there, nice and secure. I've finished the edge. I'm just going to show you what this one looks like on. Let's stretch out those gathers a little bit, make them a bit more even. So there you go. Another cuff. Okay, so we're going to put these sleeves in now. Here's my blouse. Here's my sleeve. Let's have a check of my notches. That's the double one. So this is my right sleeve going into the right side of my blouse. Right sides together, 
side seam, make sure the seam allowance is pointing towards the back, sleeve seam, match them up, pop a pin in. So make sure they're lying against each other. And a pin. And then find the notches. You've got the top of the sleeve. So that one goes to the shoulder seam. Single notch for the front of the sleeve. Pop a pin in there, then find the back, the double notch. Match those up, pop a pin in. And then just ease in anything that's left. There isn't a huge amount of ease in these sleeve, um, sleeve heads, so you'll find this a nice easy job. They fit in really snugly. So, stitching from the inside the sleeve, I start at the bottom. So, underarm seam and side seam, centimetre seam allowance. Stitch all around the edge. There we go. So there we are, there's our armhole. Going to give it an overlock or a zigzag, finish it off nicely. You could do French seams on this if you really wanted to. Give it a press, obviously, and then look, I'm just going to show you how it looks. So all that's left now is the hem. Again, lots of different ways to do it. I've just overlocked it and I'm going to turn it up, but you might want to do a turn and turn hem, which is, you know, it looks nicer. But if you're going to tuck it in, nobody will see anyway. But do which way you would like. Give it a press. And that's it. You should have, oh, barring the stragglers again, once you've trimmed all your bits off, you should have a blouse with either sheared or elasticated cuffs and a tie neck. Which you can tie how you choose. Which should look a little bit like this.